This past August at Brook Valley Bassoon Days, I was fortunate to capture a presentation about sound production and longitudinal waves as they function inside a bassoon by Christopher Millard, president of the Council of Canadian Bassoonists and former principal bassoonist of the National Arts Centre Orchestra in Ottawa, and before that, the Vancouver Symphony and CBC Radio Orchestra. Chris is a former faculty member of Northwestern University as well as the University of Ottawa and was the bassoon professor for the National Youth Orchestra. This presentation is important for two reasons. The first being a clear demonstration as to how one makes a sound when playing the bassoon. And the second one, which you might need to read between the lines to understand, is that the bassoon is not simply the resonator of the reed. So, are you ready for this? It's Warford time. Brontosaurus. <laughs> And one more thing, 60% of you who tune into my channel regularly don't actually subscribe. And I know that this may not mean anything to you, knowing that YouTube will recommend you my videos anyway, but it really does matter to me that you hit that subscribe button. The number of subscribers I have directly influences my potential to develop more and better episodes. Bassoonists answer my emails quicker. They are more willing to do an interview and more and more ideas are floated my way to produce interesting content. So please hit that red button. Thanks, and enjoy this one. Well, here we are, guys, at Camp Chaumria at Audi Lake, and I understand you all want to know how reeds work. Okay, so normally what happens, you put a reed on a bassoon, you blow into it. And we all know that the reed makes a squawking sound, right? So the squawk squawking sound goes into the bassoon and disappears out and out comes the rite of spring, right? Yeah, right? Of course. Yeah, that's, it's easy, right? Yeah. yeah. Well, unfortunately, it's not quite how it works. So the basic thing you have to remember is that reeds are not a unidirectional device. What they are is they are a pressure valve, which converts the steady blowing pressure into little pulses, little vibrations. But how the heck does the reed know, for example, if you're playing a A natural, which has a resonating frequency of 440, how does the reed know to basically operate 440 times a second? Is it in the DNA of the plant? Mm -hmm. <laughs> but well, I mean, have you ever thought about that? How the heck does it know how, what frequency to make? Well, the simple answer, of course, is you know, you choose different fingerings. So different fingerings make the bore longer or shorter. And if the bore is longer, what happens? Does the frequency go up or down when you go longer? Low, lower, right. So when you go higher, the frequency, the frequency gets higher. But anyway, what is the mechanism by which a sound wave can possibly go out from the reed and yet influence the reed? And this is what we're going to demonstrate because you guys are going to make something that we affectionately know as the human conga line. <laughs> All right, so what I want you to do, we're, you're going to be at the front. I picked you because I know you can yell. And I'll explain that in a minute. So I want you to all line up and I want you to put your right hand on the right shoulder of the person in front of you. All right, now, okay, now this is going to take a while, so enjoy it. Imagine, if you will, instead of being 20 odd people, that your six sextillion oxygen molecules, air molecules, imagine that. And when a sound wave, a pressure wave, moves through the medium of air, it moves by transference of energy. So we have Nadia at the end and trillions and trillions of air molecules. And then we have an open tone hole where Annabelle is. So what's going to happen is that Nadia is going to push and you're going to transfer the energy just like a compression wave pushes all the air molecules forward. And when that energy, it gets right to Annabelle, she doesn't want to jump off into the open air outside of the bassoon. Let's say she's an open sea hole, right? She's sitting there. She's the oxygen, the air molecules are sitting in the open hole and she's getting She's going to get pushed from behind, but she can't let go. So she just gives a little bit of her energy 
out into the big wide world. And that energy will sound like eh. Okay. Eh. Ah. Okay. Are you ready? And the minute that she says ah, don't lose contact, she's going to lean forward, say ah, and then she's going to lean back because this is what happens to the energy. The most amazing thing in nature is that when sound travels through the bassoon to the open tone hole, some of the energy goes out in the air and a lot of the energy gets reversed and in, back into the bassoon. Weird, huh? Push. Ah. <laughs> okay. This human conga line is representing what's going on inside the bore of a bassoon. The only problem is you're going a little slow. Because what has to happen, she has to say ah at the frequency of the note that she's playing. So that means that if we're playing a high A on the bassoon, which is 440 cycles per second, it has to be repeated 440 times a second. So could you please go faster? Go. Okay. Well, the speed of sound through you people is not as fast as the speed of sound in air, thank God, or, or you know, there'd be no music. But you get the idea what's happening is that the reed is Nadia, and the reed uh, emits one little pulse of energy. It's a pulse of pressure, but it's not yet defined how, what the frequency is, because the frequency only gets defined by how long the line, line is and what the humidity and the temperature is, that gets, allows the sound to go back and forth and back and forth. You all know what waves look like in an ocean, right? Sound, these are transverse waves. Sound doesn't work this way in instruments. In instruments, they are longitudinal waves. And what you are creating is a longitudinal wave. It's not as if the pressure, the wave goes like this in the bore. It's that the it's going back and forth, just like your conga line. So if you can imagine each one of you, one of the countless air molecules, and you're moving it, and you're getting this information and delivering this information at the speed of sound, that's how we manage to get a standing wave build up and you get a stable sound of the bassoon. So Nadia, who's the reed, when she gets the information from Annabelle, many, 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 many times a second, she starts to know when to operate. So her closing and opening, the frequency at which she delivers air pressure is defined by all of you. You understand? So this is how we think of a longitudinal wave and it lets us respect that the interaction of a reed on a bassoon is not unidirectional. It's bidirectional. Energy goes in, energy comes back. The bassoon is converting pressure from your breakfast, right, energy in your body, converting, you're blowing the pressure and the reed becomes the mediary between the solid air flow and the conga line of molecules. Does that make sense? Okay, you are all conga line masters, congratulations. My thanks to Christopher Millard and the Brook Valley Bassoon participants for making this video possible. If you've enjoyed this one, please consider becoming a patron via Patreon or by buying a read from bassoons.ch. Thanks for watching and take it easy. Bye-bye.